people or not anybody else people, but it's called his people. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, look, Jesus says, you know, he talks about in Matthew 7 about the broad gate. You know, many sh shall go this way, lead to destruction. But, you know, the straight and narrow, only few, a few will go here. A few that will be his people. See how that, how you need to understand that more and more. And of course, he says in Matthew 20 and 16, many are called, few are chosen, chosen to be who? His people. You know what I'm saying? You know, and the thing is, you know, we live in a world uh, that is trying to uh, more likely, of course, influence people to live contrary to the word of God. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, we have a church system that is not following the instructions of what the word of God says fully. We have these two uh, really difficult situations that will create difficult situ problems for a lot of people when you are coming against the word of God and you're in one side is not coming against the word of God and one side chooses not to follow the word of God to his entirety. That's an ugly situation as what we see in this world system. Too many ugly situations are arising and people are unfortunately spiritually sleeping to not see that they need to be aware that, you know, that, wait a minute, I'm about becoming uh, God's people. You know what I'm saying? It's like the topic of the message to becoming God's people. Now, the thing is, um, the pattern is it's so many scriptures. I wrote them down, you know, that shows that God is selecting his. Because here's the thing, you know, Christians, unfortunately, they think, oh, because I go to this building and I go here and I and I pray and I, I do Christian stuff, I you know, the Christian things, and bam, I'm in there. I'm his people, you know? And it's like, you know, can we just let the word of God or these people need to realize the word of God is going to tell you, are you his people? Not the ministers, not the preachers, not they're there they're to teach you the word of God. They're there to uh, help you, encourage you to become a better Christian. That's what ministry, the fivefold ministry is mainly all about teaching and, and preaching, helping you to uh, understand the instructions of the word of God. But to be his people is, of course, of what you are supposed to do concerning the message or instructions that are given to you. And you following the word of God, as what it says in Timothy, you study to sh show yourself approved. Yourself, you know what I'm saying? That you are about being his people as what Jesus put out there. The children of God will love their enemies, bless those that curse them, pray for them that despitefully use them. That's what he, that's what will be the his father's children, as what it says in Matthew 5 and 4 and 4. And the 45th will say that these are my father's children. You know what I'm saying? And to love your enemies. <laughs> Whoa. That's a difficult thing to do in this ideal influential system of, like I said, you got one system of the world is coming against the word of God and another one is not following the word of God. And to perform an act of loving your enemies at this day and age, be, being of the world and being a Christian is going to be difficult. Um, unfortunately, because of the influence and the lack of influence is not given 
people are not going to be capable of truly representing God to be his people. Now, it's, it's been a pattern throughout uh, the, uh, pat, uh, the prophets, the prophets uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, um, uh, uh, and Joel and uh, Zechariah. They talk about, I will be, they will be my people uh, and I will be their God. And they will be my people and I will be their God. And in Jeremiah, it talks about Allah. Well, you know, Jeremiah, man, this guy's great. I mean, he's a hardcore prophet. I mean, he's. I mean, it's a lot of hardcore prophets. But Jeremiah was real hardcore. You know what I'm saying? He was like obey his voice. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he was straight up with the church at his time. He was straight up with the church in Israel. Nah, you can't do this. No, you're not going to do that. No, you're not supposed to be doing that kind of prophet he was, you know, and, you know, he was saying, obey his voice. And if you do it, he will, you will be his people and he will be your God, you know, and, it, you know, it's in uh, Jeremiah 7, 23 and 11 and 4 and 24 chapter and second, seventh verse. Uh, 31, uh, ch chapter 31 and first verse and, uh, 31st, 32nd verse and what's that? Uh, 38. And th this is Jeremiah's book. He's continually repeating this pattern, you know, to the people telling them, if you do this, hearken to the voice of the Lord, you, you will be his people and he will be your God. You know what I'm saying? This is how many times he was saying this. So what I am kind of trying to convey that idea to you, that to remind you, because here's the thing, what I learned about the lust of the flesh and following in the darkness, the most powerful thing that darkness can do to uh, people that continue to follow into it is to make you forget make you forget the God that created you, make you forget the word of God that you're supposed to follow in order for you to have life and life more abundantly. It, the kingdom of darkness is the aim wanted to make you forget, you know, pretty much who you are, you know, supposed to be Genesis 126, made in the image and likeness of God. But this world system says, oh, no, you're supposed to be this person uh, image of what the world put out there that people, many people like to see, you know, you need to be this image, whatever they throw out you, you know, and unfortunately the church is like, you know, is not combating the ideal influence enough concerning to let people know, no, we cannot be this people. No, we cannot do these things. Oh, we supposed to be doing this as a people, as a whole. You know, the ideal that, you know, the ideal the the church system is operating in division is is a clearly clearly thing that they're not aiming to be God's people because God is about his unity, his whole, his people. You know what I'm saying? And to be divided by itself, showing, you know, clear uh, action towards God, a clear action towards God that, no, nah, we don't want to be your people. We just want to, you know, just do this over here and do this over there and, and sort of kind of get the gospel out and sort of kind of do what your word of God says and claim to be your people. No, that don't cut it. And God and unto God, it may cut it to uh, men asking ministers or preachers, "Oh, are we truly being a, a God's people? Are we truly serving the Lord? Are we truly, you know?" They might give you say, "Well, yeah, yeah, yeah." They, your ministers or teacher preachers might say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," but God, like, nah, ah, 
That's how God, God's just like, no. Because look, God, as what Jesus showed us the pattern, many are called, many are called, few are chosen. You know what I'm saying? They sincerely mean this. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the thing is, um, like I've been talking about on God Ween, that there's not enough of the understanding the fear of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the reverence and respect of God is totally lack at this time concerning following God's word, concerning of what he desires for us to do to be his people. Now, I, God, you know, kind of more likely wanted me to post some scriptures uh, last night about um, what Second Thessalonians. Um, well, these scriptures that is talking about his the performance he expect out of his people in a course of First Peter two and nine that's talking about the royal priesthood. You know what I'm saying? The peculiar people, the holy nation. You know what I'm saying? God is about to put together his people. See, now when you understand his people, your mind, whatever you think is unrelevant. It's not whatever you want to consider to think that, well, I'm sort, I'm, I'm his people. You know, like I, we like to say, oh, I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm, I'm of God. I'm, I'm, I'm this. See, what we think is unrelevant. Is what God sees in who God and though and he sees in those that are following his instructions of what the word of God says. He says, you're my people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You you own my team. It's not you don't make the rules to say that I'm God's child. No, God makes the rules to say you're his child. Get what I'm saying? Because, you know, everybody like to throw that, you know, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God but still struggling with unforgiveness. I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God, but I mean, the ideal of loving your enemies does not really recollect with you. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, we need to understand that the word of God says what it says, and it means what it says, that we need to come to understand if you're gonna truly follow his people and you're gonna need Jesus Christ, you're going to need the power of Jesus Christ to follow. You cannot follow Jesus Christ. I mean, you can't follow God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the flesh. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians think you can't. You know what I'm saying? They think, you know, I can sort of kind of follow him, you know, in my, you know, somewhat love my neighbor somewhat, you know, have joy, somewhat have peace, I can follow. I mean, look, the word of God speaks for itself. You know, Jesus told you straight up, Revelations 3, he'll spit you out if you come in with this lukewarm kind of a thing, because look, he's going to spit you out because as him being God and God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, they come for their people. They're not coming for people that say that they are his people. And no, they're coming for his people. You know what I'm saying? That you need to understand if you truly becoming his people. And they like, oh, you're not his people? Later. See it. I don't know you. Depart from me. I never knew you. That's what it says in Matthew 7. He's not, he's not, they're not playing games. The world plays games. Unfortunately, this church system is playing games. God and Jesus Christ does not play games. They are sincere and serious about their agenda of what they create. This world is created for to select their people that I hope you understand that this video is all about. All right. But that's the message. Hope you understand. I hope you truly have a sincereness of being his people, of following the instructions of the word of God and stop following a system that is coming against God in his world system and unfortunately a church system that is not about following the whole Bible and what his instructions and saying. And that's the message. God be the Lord.
him forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen.